Hi, Doug here. So, um, I haven't done one of these videos in a while, one of these science videos, and um, I'm starting to feel a lot better. So, thank you everyone for the great well wishes and well being. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. So, thank you for that. Um, what I have here in front of me is a liquid oxygen tank or a cryogenic duar. Now, I imagine most of you probably don't know what this is or what one even looks like inside, but this is for everyone. So, starting from the beginning, what is a duar? So, a duar is a fancy word for thermos. So those thermoses, you like those Yeti cups that you keep your coffee hot in and your cold drinks cold in throughout the day. What those are is there's two tanks. There's the inner vessel where your fluid or your drink goes and then the outer wall. Between the two is nothing, literally. It's a vacuum. They pull a vacuum inside because the only thing that could transfer energy is air or a medium of some sort. So if these two don't touch and there's absolutely nothing or a vacuum between, heat energy from the outside, the vibrating molecules, cannot transmit their energy to this inner tank. So your fluid stays cold. Vice versa, if it's hot inside, the vibrating wall of that tank can't transmit that wiggly energy to the outside tank to transmit it out to the atmosphere to dissipate that heat. So it's a it's the best insulation you can get. This one was wrapped in layers of mylar and fabric. Uh, mylar is a type of material is engineered to block a very specific wavelength of light. Uh, I believe it's in the infrared spectrum or the heat spectrum. So it trans prevents any of that wiggling from getting any farther. I think it was about 30 layers. Mylar fabric, mylar fabric, mylar fabric to both absorb and cancel out any infrared energy emanating in either direction. So that's enough talk about that. So long story short, you were to put like I'd say an ice cold beverage in here or a coffee, you're looking at like a month before it gets anywhere near noticeable difference in temperature. That's how good these things are. The reason they have to be that good is the liquid in this one is oxygen, liquid oxygen. And I forget the number off the top of my head, but negative like 300 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a cryogenic fluid. It needs to stay cold or else it evaporates into a gas. And it goes from 780 to one expansion ratio. So you have one gallon of liquid in here, that's roughly 780 gallons of gas that's gotta go somewhere. That's why they store it in liquid form. It's much more efficient storage of gas. The problem is you gotta keep it really cold. Well, cold will always stay cold. It'll wanna stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. In this case, heat or outside energy, light, thermal, vibration, all of that. That's what this doer is designed to protect against. It keeps the liquid liquid and prevents it from outgassing. Now, there's a lot of safety that comes with a system like this, and that's why I'm gonna show you the top here. So, this outer tank here is just a relatively thin wall of stainless. And this plug here is called the vacuum plug. So right now you'll see in there, it's just the hole. What lived inside that hole was what's called a vacuum plug, which is this guy right here. So what they do is they hook up a fancy apparatus here or a big tube that clips on. So I can lift this off. And you'll see that there's a little place that it clicks onto with some ball bearings. And then they hook up a high vacuum pump like this Edwards RV12 here. They take the end, they put it on the apparatus and they pump a vacuum. They pull all the air out between these two layers. Once they've achieved that, there's a special rod inside that releases the plug down into the hole and it pulls down inside. And then once they release the atmosphere out here, that plug gets sucked in or pushed in from the outside atmosphere to seal that hole. And they put some vacuum grease in there to basically fill in any imperfections and it is now sealed. So that maintains a vacuum inside this tank uh, for the duration of its life. Now, to explain the complexity of this in a simple way, you see this tube here coming up the center? What that is is called the dip tube. And I happen to have another one here from another tank. So you'll see there's this tube that goes all the way down. Well, that tube goes down inside the tank and sits at the very bottom. Think of this like a giant straw. So that giant straw basically sucks the fluid from the bottom and brings it up the top and out to the system. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with how straws work, but if you create a lower pressure on one side of the straw than the other, it will force the fluid down through, up, out the straw and into your mouth. So whenever you're sucking out, drinking out of a straw, you're actually creating a vacuum with your cheeks by expanding them. That lower pressure causes the atmosphere to push the drink up through the straw into your mouth. So the power of the atmosphere is actually what's shoving that liquid into your face. How cool is that? Anywho, so this dip tube here serves two purposes. It has an inner tube that comes all the way up to the top here that goes up through here into this line. This line here goes out and goes through this really fun curly cue. The reason this is done is it's out, it's a liquid right now, like negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. As it passes through this tube, it acts like a radiator, lots of surface area. All that energy now can hit that surface area and heat up that liquid. That liquid now converts slowly as it goes around into a gas. That gas then goes up into this regulator block and it connects out to your oxygen tank. And this is where you'd hook up your gaseous oxygen tank or have gas output for someone who needs it for medical use. Now, another line comes off, splits out, goes around here, 
and goes over to this little safety regulator. This little regulator has a blow-off valve, and the reason you need a blow-off valve on a cryo tank is you really don't want a sealed cryo tank. Like I said, it expands, and you basically would have a bomb as that gas, that liquid tries to expand multiple thousands of times and has nowhere to go, so the pressure would go up. So this little blow-off here, if it goes above 110 PSI, pops its little top and vents off the atmosphere. So if you're around cryo tanks and you hear them pop and you hear a bunch of hissing, don't freak out. That's normal for a cryo tank to do that. It's just venting off excess pressure. Totally normal, totally safe. Now in an oxygen environment, having pure gaseous oxygen coming out is an oxidizer, so it promotes combustion. So that will be something to worry about around a liquid oxygen tank. But I imagine most of you will not be around one of these once, uh, if not often. On the top up here, this little uh, nipple is where they fill it at the factory. So the liquid oxygen tank, the big one at the factory, goes on top, fills the liquid straight down through the dip tube down inside. There's a really cool mechanism here on the side that when you push down, lifts that up and releases the connection for the tank off the top. Um, there is a small little line here that goes to a hose. That hose combines to this guy. This little guy here is the tank uh, fillness, how full a tank is. And it has two little connections on the bottom for low and high. Those are for pressure. So the high pressure is this guy here. It comes off the top of the gaseous tank and goes into the back of that meter. This little red tube here, see it goes down inside the tank. It comes out inside the tank, goes through this line, and goes all the way down inside the bottom. It sits in the liquid at all times. So the difference between that liquid head and the gas head, that pressure difference, can tell through the electronics how full the tank is. And then once you get to a dangerous level where there's no liquid present anymore and both pressures equalize, it'll flash to let you know you need to get this thing filled right away because you're below the safety point of the tank, not having any liquid inside, it's all vapor. So I think I covered most of it. This is a safety uh, valve here that you can open the tank to atmosphere uh, if you need to service it for any reason like I do. Um, things if you're ever working on, if you wanna cut one of these in half, absolutely make sure there's no pressure in it. First thing you wanna do is take this inner vessel to atmosphere, vent all uh, gas out of it, purge it, make sure there's no oxygen living inside. Next stage, you wanna pull the vacuum plug. You wanna get the vacuum away from the inside of this. Once everything is open and you can look inside visually with your eye and see that it's open to atmosphere, then you can start cutting it. Um, to get into it. I just use the grinder with the cutoff wheel to cut through the stainless to get inside, uh, which is a cool process. Why did I do this? Well, this one, uh, once you open it up here, yee, I'm gonna put shelves inside, and this is gonna become a great decor piece with shelving inside and a little light on top, uh, just to make a really cool uh, shelving unit. Uh, the inner tank here, I'm thinking of making into a vacuum chamber. I might cut off the bottom end and make a clear window for it, and that will become my new high pressure, well, low pressure vacuum chamber. Um, I have three of these tanks now. I have another one here. This one has a different top on it. I taped it for sealing. It's a little bit larger. So you can see inside there, that has a larger orifice into the tank. And the reason I needed that is over here is my cryotor. This is a liquid helium reverse sterling cycle cryogenic refrigeration system. That little tip down there goes down to four degrees Kelvin. Um, that is four degrees above absolute zero. It gets very cold. I'm going to trim all of this accoutrement off and that cold head will go down inside the doer and it'll live down inside this perfectly insulated environment where I can generate large volumes of liquid nitrogen at home. So I can just slowly fill this up and it won't disappear on me. I'll get a couple months before it all outgasses away. So I actually have a place of saving it now. Before, my only doer I had was this little Mr. Fusion down here and that only held about a liter of liquid nitrogen and I had no top for it so it evaporated out pretty quick. So that's the story behind that. If you guys have any questions about a cryogenic tank, uh, more about what I'm doing, or just want to see more science videos like that, now that I'm feeling better, I could do more of these. So I'm glad you stayed through the video this long. It, God, it's almost 10 minutes. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.